The need for sustainable peace, unity and development has continually been reverberated throughout Nigeria and African continent for a couple of decades now, as the existence of those are a prerequisite for achieving sustainable economic development in any civilization, since the absence of peace and unity hinders development. It is a fact that there is no developed economy that reached where it is today without encountering challenges. Nigeria and Africa as a whole are developing economy and therefore are not shielded from the challenges of insecurity, cessation agitation and a host of other teething problems that are marrying the relative peace. Most of the developed countries in the world today achieve their national dream after a long process of restructuring social justice and good governance which is the basis for positive peace. They know that if peace prevails, all would work together in harmony to bring about economic, political and social development. We should be an agent. I have learned that. So now we should try as much as possible to avoid it. But prevention is better than cure. So to avoid this conflict in our society. My coming here gave me more energy. I found out that with resilience and commitment, one can easily manage conflicts. One topic that really uh, interests me is this communication. We don't have much problem with the two religions, Islam and Christianity. We don't also have, we're not also in dispute. What I think is wrong is the way we communicate. The Cardinal Nyakon Foundation for Peace, COFP, in pursuit of unity, peace and human development, both in Nigeria and Africa, has continued to inspire, empower and build the capacity of faith leaders, community actors, civil groups, especially men and women as agents of change and peace actors at the grassroots by transforming violent conflict through engaging communities into peace dialogue and by empowering women and youth through vocational skills for sustainable human development. The fellowship program has become the flagship of our peace building efforts. We have noticed that on the whole, our people at the grassroots are most terms with one another. On the other end of the spectrum, we have been seeing a lot of positive contacts between religious leaders at the highest level. For example, the Nigerian Religious Council and the Nigerian Interfaith Initiative for Peace of the Sultan and the Cardinal. It is our opinion that the great problem is with the middle level leadership. For example, the level of the pastors and the imams who preach to and teach the congregations at the grassroots levels on Sundays and Fridays. This is the level that our fellowship program has been targeting. Reports reaching us are that a lot of success is being achieved. The 2021-2022 COFP fellowship program, which is fourth in this series, began in July 2021. The fellowship program in 2021-2022 is significant as it brought together participants not only from Nigeria but across Africa. Men, women and youth including persons with disabilities from diverse backgrounds. For instance, 60 fellows were brought together for the one-year fellowship program from 11 African countries. The capacity of these leaders and actors from multi-religious group, culture and languages in Africa was built in identifying and mitigating violence through dialogue negotiation, mediation and ethical leadership. COFP Foundation believes that it is time to do things differently. This is the reason why our fellowship program is designed to inspire and engage participants on sessions that are relevant to their local reality. The program offers participants a way to view human relations differently, finding the best in others, even in their adversaries. The goal of COFP Fellowship Program 
is to build on our common humanity together. It empowers leaders and actors to find their potential, harness healing energy, and become more proficient agents of peace. This platform, which is already yielding positive results as evidence through the active participation, improved interaction, and community peace project implemented by these fellows, has shown us that all hope is not yet lost in the pursuit of social justice and true peace. This program is very relevant. It is it's teaching time because as we go globally, we need to think locally as we go globally. Uh, this initiative coming from Nigeria being the largest, most populous uh, black nation in the world, and for the people coming from other parts of the country, world, in Africa, and the diversity of the people in the meeting, uh, we have all sects, all religious sects available in Nigeria and outside. They are all here saying, let's join our hands together and be a build bridge across the heart. It's very relevant, it's very apt. The first module of our fellowship program allow fellows to learn about the fundamentals of other religious beliefs from a team of selected courses and topics, which prepares them to build a common ground for peace when they get back to their communities. With the skills that they have acquired here, we can address this. This is something that we need to work with and we say we can change the way our people think down there. We are going to be ambassadors of peace and I am happy that I am going to be the very first Kenyan to stand up and say we are all children of the same father. This knowledge is an addition to me to go out there to the grassroots and use it to bring peace or to make the two major religions or major faith to understand each other and to develop our country. Coming to this program was really to acquire my knowledge, to understand more about the Islamic religion because I have very little knowledge about what Islam is all about. So I was really happy that this program offers that opportunity. During the second model, fellows acquired skills for interreligious dialogue and alternative dispute resolution as tools for mediation. They were trained on project design and proposal development as well. At the end of Module 2, fellows were supported financially and otherwise in translating the skills acquired during the fellowship program into practical actions in their various communities through the execution of various peace projects in their communities. Looking at um, our society at large and our community, that is the Kodu community that we held the program, we realize that our youth have they've thrown caution to the wind. They've now um, taken drugs as part of their daily lives. And if care is not taken, if all stakeholders are not com uh, did not come to the round table to, to, to fashion out a way of preventing it and even um, creating a final solution to curb this, we can see that we are sitting on a, on a, on a keg of bomb that can blow. Both approach is different in the sense that they want you to do something practical uh, with what you've learned. So we've been capacitated, we've been exposed to different scenarios. And so this is part of uh, that demonstration uh, to be able to actualize that which we've learned. One Zambia. Thank you. So for group two, how best do you think we can participate in political space as an agent of peace? Zambia is regarded as a peaceful nation. I have no quarrel with that, but we have also had instances that have indicated the agri side of Zambia, you know, and uh, these areas that have been picked here, Makeni Vira, uh, here Kanyamawad, are hot spots. You will be alive to the fact that the two deaths that happened in the last general election, elections happened here. My name is John Jason Mawingo from EFF, Economic Freedom Fighters. I'm an agent of peace. Let peace reign. Thank you. The foundation is there to try to bring about peace in the country. And so we do it in so many ways. Um, usually we apply dialogue, interreligious dialogue, 
to bring the different faiths together, whether traditional worshippers, whether Muslims or Christians, to sit at the round table and identify even our common grounds first. And then, having known our common grounds, then we begin to talk of those differences that we have. Module 3 prepares the fellows on the fundamentals of executive leadership while consolidating on the lessons and skills acquired in the previous models. I can say it's more of a practical uh, kind of uh, a thing. My mindset was changed. This very exercise and training I have gone through now will enable me to improve in teaching people, mentoring people, coaching people, and then solving problems in our localities and elsewhere when invited or when seen necessary. In the community I live, I'm going to have a session with the youth because I see it as educating the youth about the need for peace will help us to have a better understanding in the society because the, the youth are the leaders of tomorrow and without them knowing the importance for peace, they will not actually value it. So I hope to really go to the grassroots to catch them young. I firmly resolve more than ever to be part of peaceful coexistence initiatives, changing the narrative, especially amongst young people like me, whom have been used as tools to perpetrate these heinous crimes, leading to the death of not just thousands, but millions of people. With the skills acquired so far, I am primarily targeting to impact more on the youth who have been employed very often by some shadow actors in perpetuating the evils and divisions and strifes and war and violence that we see around us, reminding them of the fact that first and foremost, religion, tribe, race and tongue are only accidental. What matters first and foremost is that we are human and if we get oblivious of this and we forget this, then we are all doomed for destruction. So, humanity first, for my country, we have gone through 14 years of civil war, and some of us have been traumatized so many years, and we see those same people that, that harm us the past years. These are people now, some of us are doctors, some of us are nurses, some of us are social workers, accountants, we have to deal with these people. So this second morning make me to face them. Now I have the courage to face them and see. And the skills that I have learned from here, I'm going to use it in my own country. All these efforts help to prepare fellows for graduation and equip them effectively for the greater task of community building. Having completed an intensive and participatory one-year fellowship program, fellows will receive certificates in interreligious dialogue, conflict transformation and mediation through Veritas University of Nigeria, VUNA, and Nile University of Nigeria, NUN, who are partners of COFP in the project. This is the soap that we have done for the environment of our women and the help of the Cardinal Nayokon Foundation for Peace. But their peace-building journey will not end here. Rather, their graduation from COFP Fellowship Program will open a bigger avenue for them as members of the COFP African Network of Peace Builders, CANEP, which is a continental network that enables fellows from African countries to further interaction, enhance cross-cultural learning, advance joint peace building intervention, and share experiences on best practices even after the fellowship program. Thanks to the financial aid from our donors, the GHR Foundation, the Hilton Foundation, and the German Federal Foreign Office, and the collaboration of other partners, which has enabled us to provide a well-packaged training scheme for these local actors who 
has been equipped to become ambassadors of peace in their various communities. From what we have seen so far, it is clear that the COFP Foundation is indeed uniting people of different faith and culture for peace through dialogue.